and welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist here at Walter Reed Medical Center. Uh, especially welcome to all of those who are watching from all parts of the hospital, uh, especially those who are patients. And uh, uh, as we, ga we gather together, there is no distance with God, and He is with us. So we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And as we gather, we, we become aware of uh, our needs for God's healing and forgiveness, not just for ourselves, but for our, our world, for our nations, our cities, um, for our families. And we pray to the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of a man called Barnabas, who was a friend of St. Paul's. And he... Uh, was, became one of the apostles, one of the, one of the first um, preachers of the gospel in the ancient world, especially in the Middle East. And as I say, he was a close friend of St. Paul's and, um, you know, a tireless uh, worker uh, to bring the good news to the people. And so we pray. O oh God, St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, was set apart by you to convert the nations. Grant that the gospel, the good news of Christ, which he preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people were added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and to the large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manion, who was a close friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. Thanks mm -hmm. be to God. Our response to the psalm is, The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made known his salvation, has made known his salvation. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. 
He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard what it was said, You shall not commit adultery. I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. Your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You've heard this Gospel many times, I'm sure. It actually, it begins, there's another sentence uh, that comes before the first sentence we read today where um, you've heard it said and Jesus is saying you know according to our faith our tradition the laws of our nation you've heard it said that you shall not murder but Jesus says but I say to you uh, anyone who's angry with his neighbor or insults his neighbor uh, is also guilty uh, and then he goes on to say and even someone who looks with lust at a woman has committed adultery. Now, it goes on to say some pretty harsh things about kind of pulling your eye out or cutting your hand off. He's using some very strong language to awaken us to, well, the fact that um, even though we might not be murderers and adulterers, we can be, be very easily caught up into the evil around us. And let me explain that. Um, we're not, for the most part, murderers or adulterers. Uh, we're not, for the most part, white supremacists or racists. I'm sure uh, many of you, as you watch the protests these days, and see the scenes of, of uh, injustice, uh, you're saying, well, I, I don't do that. And it's true, we may not be uh, the extremists, the, the racists who physically injure other people or who uh, uh, mistreat uh, people of a different race. But who of us can say that we've not participated in other ways? Jesus is pointing out that there's many ways to hurt others, not just murder. There's other ways to exploit others and not just adultery. There's many ways to be a racist, and not just with physical violence. I grew up in a small rural town and went to school in a small rural high school where there was one person who had a different skin color from the rest of us, one person. Um, and uh, 
At that time, it was very common among my friends, my classmates, to make remarks about that person who had a different skin color, and to make generalizations about different groups of people in general. Who of us has not made generalizations about groups of people? You know, all those Latinos, or all those black people, or all those white people, or all those immigrants. You know, uh, we make generalizations. We're not deep down, I hope, not deep down racist or extremist or violent people or unjust people. But there's many ways that we get caught up into the injustices that are kind of built into our society. I'm sure none of us uh, is responsible, for example, for exploiting laborers. You know. If any of you are employers, you try to pay your people uh, a decent salary and, and be fair with them. Yet all of us benefit from uh, the uh, products that come from other countries that are made by people who are not paid good wages. All of us um, enjoy uh, having our, our roast beef or our steak, I'm perhaps not even aware that to raise that meat that we eat, uh, whole rainforests are being destroyed. And the people who uh, work the soil are being exploited. Uh, when we enjoy our coffee, we don't know or think about the fact that we can buy that coffee cheaply because those who grow it and harvest it in other countries are paid very, very little. And so the price of coffee stays cheap. So it's, this isn't to put everyone on a guilt trip, but it's to remind us that we can, without being murderers and adulterers and racists, we can participate in injustice, even unknowingly and indirectly. And I think Jesus is calling us to that, to remind us that just as <clears throat> the injustice that others do, we can unwillingly get caught up into, we, are all, we can also uh, help one another to do justice, to do the right thing. Um, we may think that, well, we don't have the power to make laws, we don't have the power to change society, to overcome racism. But we do, you see. The little bit that we do contributes to the, the very atmosphere of acceptance or of exclusion, of racism or of solidarity. Uh, and no, we may not be the ones resorting to physical violence, assaulting other people, but uh, we are part of the society. And uh, so our actions are influenced by that, and our actions influence that society. Christ reminds us that we are all in this together, that everything we do impacts our neighbor, even when we don't realize it. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. Let us pray. For all the patients here at Walter Reed Bethesda, may you know God's peace and strength and healing we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the staff here at the hospital in all your various roles and tasks, may you be aware that you are part of God's healing mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray for all those struggling with the COVID virus and for all the health workers uh, and frontline workers trying to help them and save them. For them, their safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our cities, that the protests may lead to fruitful discussions, dialogue, listening, and reform that brings justice to all peoples and peace to our cities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, to...
Jesus, I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his present daily life. I surrender Sisters and brothers, pray that our gifts of bread and wine and the gift of our lives today may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Lord, bless the offerings we present here, that by your grace they may set us free, they may set us on fire with the flame of your love that fire which St. Barnabas brought to the light of the gospel to the nations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty God. Eternal Shepherd, you do not desert your flock. But through people like Barnabas, you watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those who have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of Jesus. And so, with the apostles, with the angels, saints, and all creation, we praise you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke the bread and gave it to his followers, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. You proclaim your death to God and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate this memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. We give thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence, to serve you, to serve the world in need. We pray that by sharing the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. We pray for our world for peace and justice. We pray for our church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all your faithful people. Remember our brothers and sisters who died in the hope of the resurrection, especially those who died here in this past week. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that along with Mary and Joseph, Francis and Claire, Barnabas, Oscar Romero, 
Greece of Calcutta, and all those who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may inherit eternal life and praise and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. United with Jesus, we pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit, you. Father. We share that peace with all those who need to share it. Yeah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word on my soul shall be healed. Sweet sacraments divine, hide in thine earthly home. Lo, round thy lowly shrine with soft hearts we come, Jesus. To thee our voice we raise In songs of love and heartfelt praise Sweet song from in divine Sweet song from in Let us pray. As we receive this pledge of eternal life, we humbly ask, Lord, that what we celebrate in this sacramental sign in memory of the Apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord, the world in need. Thanks be Thank to you. God. Thank you for coming. We wish you all God's peace, health, and blessings. Amen.
When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the home of my father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Crazy. I'm not going to. No? I see you. 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 I see